I know that many of you got confused with this problem. Here they are trying to check if you understand chain rule and can work with the data rather than the function given uh, the way we got used to it. Remember, the function can be given as an expression y equals f of x, x squared plus 3, for example. Graph, graph, which is, for example, parabola, but also as a data. So data scientists all day long stare at tables like these. Maybe they're medical data or stocks data and so on, temperature data. So x here are inputs. Inputs are in the first column, 1, 2, 3. Outputs are in the first row. They are outputs of f and g, f prime, g prime. So original function outputs and their derivatives outputs. And now let's learn how to use this table. Solution. For a, they ask us to find h prime at 1. Let's first just find h prime. h prime will be the derivative prime of f of g of x. Okay, sounds kind of scary, but let's break it carefully into pieces. The derivative of the nested function, nested, not nasty. <laughs> it means it has a function inside of the function. Like an onion, we are unfolding it from the outside. By the definition of the chain rule, we need to take the derivative of the function outside first and then multiply by the derivative of the function inside. The only interesting thing you need to remember is that the derivative of the function outside is not taken at x, it's taken at the function inside. That's why I like to say that we need to copy the function inside first and then multiply by the derivative of the function inside. So now, basically, this is almost the answer. I have this result. And now I just need to find the numbers for this result. So h prime of 1 will be derivative of the function inside. Let me color code it for you. At the, no, the derivative of the function outside at a function inside, which is g, and instead of x, I'm substituting 1, multiplied by a derivative of the function inside at x, which is 1. Oh, that was already kind of hard, so let's continue. Hopefully, number part will be easier. Let me find a derivative of g at 1. I now need to look at this last column. The last column tells me that g prime at 1, so I'm looking at x equals to 1 for a, for the whole a problem. And I need to find the intersection at, let me erase everything else so it doesn't get confused. Here you go. g prime, let me put it in green. g prime at 1 is 3. Thus, this whole term is 3. I cannot find f prime at g first. I need to find g of 1 first. And that's why they're called nested functions, because one function is inside of another function. So I'm looking at the original function g at the same first column when x is 1. Well, the answer is 1. But that's not what we want. We want f prime at 1. Maybe not to confuse you. Let me rewrite it just one more time. It's going to be f prime at 1. We just found this one from the table. Multiplied by 3. We already found that. So I need to find f prime at 1. f prime is the third. Well, depending if you count the first column or not. It's column number 4. Let's say it like this. f prime. And we need to look at, at f prime also at 1. The answer is 3. Not very interesting. They keep giving us 3 and 1 and 1 and 3. 3 times 3 gives me 9. Yay! And this is the answer for the first part of the problem. Can you finish the second part by yourself? Maybe pause the video, finish it by yourself, and then come back to compare the results. We need to differentiate the function h. 
h of x. Derivative of h will be derivative of g of f of x. And we're putting massive prime outside of it. Let me first deal with chain rule and then use the table to substitute values. They basically switch the order of the nesting. Now f is inside of g. Thus, derivative of the function outside will be now derivative of g. Taking at f of x, remember, copy the function inside. And then you do times the derivative of the function inside. That is the answer before we substitute values. Now, let's find h prime at the given value, 3. So let me rewrite everything carefully. g prime at f of 3 multiplied by f prime at 3. Again, I will start with f prime because it seems like to be easier. f prime is the column in green. I already used it before. f prime this time need to be looked at 3. So I'm looking at the last row, x equals to 3, and finding the intersections. The answer is 3. Again, not very creative why we keep dealing with the same numbers, but it's fine. It's data after all. Now, I cannot find g prime right away. I need to find f at 3. So now I'm going to the original function f, which we did not use yet. f at 3 is 1. Finally, some kind of different answer for a chance. I don't know, am I too grumpy for this problem? And now the last step will be to figure out g prime at 1. Let me rewrite it for you. g prime at 1 times 3 equals g prime is the last column at 1. Takes us back to the first row. And the answer is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. You can imagine I have face palm right now because even the answer is the same. Well, that might not be coincidence. Because for some functions, that is true, that you can exchange the order of nesting and the answer will be the same. This is how you work with data. If you ever wanted to consider a job as a data scientist, which you should, you can imagine dealing with this type of problem on a daily basis, but just harder and bigger. But you paid a lot for that. Good job for practicing. See you next time.